いいんだよ。分かった Uh, it is July 2nd, 2019. And、uh, we've got a cast of characters. Harry's here, Reinhold, Paul Copeland, h o d i e Hopefully, Sarah Brady Wagner will be along soon. And that will be coming up here in just one moment right after this. Warning this show is for adults, produced by semi adults. So the language is sometimes strong and offensive.、Uh, I don't know what I said.、Uh... Welcome to We Are Libertarians, where our goal is to help you sound smarter while talking to your friends. We examine current events from a libertarian perspective while treating modern politics with all of the irreverence it deserves. There has been lie after lie. We toss out the screaming heads, put people before political parties, and give context to the news to make you think. Now, here's our host, a 15 year veteran of politics and media, Chris Spangle. Hello, everybody. So nice to be with you. Very excited to be here tonight. We've got a great show for you.、Uh, probably too much show. So I don't, I don't know how we're going to fit it all in. That's what you have again. So we've got, a, we've got a party. It's a party atmosphere, like the old days. So I wear my party shirt.、Uh, balmy 68 degrees in here. AC is set at 66. How are you doing, Harry Price? Going good. Going really good. Yes.、Yeah. I finally opened up Facebook again. Oh, really? How'd that go? Well, I got a lot of notifications. Yeah, like, is that, isn't that picture from six years ago? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, yeah, when Creighton was here and he's standing behind me and he's wearing his red, white, and blue bandana,、mm-hmm. it's very stupid.、Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll post that on our Instagram. Well, I'll、we'll、post、Creighton. it on the Instagram.、That's, we'll post it on the group. That's his most recent notification. So he's, he's hilarious. Scrolling down through, he's trying to catch up. Yeah, it's memories. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Well, this is fascinating radio, Harry. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. This photo that no one can <laughs> see,、this. that no one is aware of. <laughs> oh, okay. Well,、boy. you put the camera all the way over there. Why has, see? Why see? has the camera is not going to pick that up? And that、no. camera is w e i g h t It's a shitty Logitech. And since it's on Zoom, it's on. It's at 79.7. So that's 1080p. It's just going through Zoom as your encoder into the slobs or OBS. So why has God blessed me with、And、such then, a troop of idiots? And then the other thing, since you, you, you've got a text, you've got a tech group that could really help punch up the tech side of this, and we just, we're not allowed to do anything. No,、right. he rejects it all. Okay. All right. I try to bring my makeup kid in here to do makeup, and he rejected that. He、we、then got, tries to call the police. At one time. No, every time you want to call the police and warn them that we're live and we're not to be swatted. See. He wanted, it's a fear. Harry wanted it's to. It's a fear. Let me introduce the others so they can get in on this. Reinhold's、uh, the one talking. Reinhold, how、I'm、are、sorry. you? I'm doing fine. I forgot that I'm not supposed to talk until I'm introduced. Paul Copeland, how are you? I'm doing great, Chris. Are you? Bad form. I don't know. If you heard the. We had about 20 minutes of extra intro material where we talk shit about everybody. And、uh, Hody Johns is here. We did not talk shit about Hody. We already had Maya wearing makeup on the show. Isn't that enough dudes wearing makeup, Harry? I'm sure he's not the only one.、Uh, and then Sarah Brady Wagner will hopefully be along soon. We're celebrating 100 dailies、uh, tonight.、Uh, the list,、uh, here's the th- problem with doing anything Harry says it's not that he, he knows what he's doing. He just likes to buy cheap Chinese junk that complicates everything. And this is, this, this is one of my podcasts, not even my full time job. This is、uh, something I can devote 10 hours a week to at this point in my life. And、uh, frankly, drywalling my kitchen so I can, can put up a, 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 or moving the entire bedroom into the living room and putting this studio in the bedroom, none of these are feasible ideas. They're not bad ideas, they're just stupid ideas. Uh, first off, they're great ideas.、Uh, my ideas are the best ideas.、Um, Everything would be better if you would just you know, listen to my ideas. Now, granted, I was mostly going not for cheap Chinese junk, they're more inexpensive Taiwanese junk. Right. It's different, big difference. Okay. Okay. All right. Enough of this. We've got a, we've got a 
And All the other right. thing is Hold on. hiring producer Paul, you know, so you'd be behind the camera controlling the lights, but no, you have him here on, ca- I, on camera I need, talking. I need Paul to show me he's dependable. Paul, have you been tagging posts on, on the website? Oh, crap. <laughs> See? <laughs> See? What? See? Uh, Paul, I love you, but I really could use your help. So yeah, it's no. okay, though. It's a free job, and, you, you know, you, you're busy. Yeah. Busy man. Wallowing in my depression, which you can, if you're a Patreon, you'll hear plenty of. I mean, honestly, we got, <laughs> no. I got secondhand depression from listening to, to his, Hody, you're all the way in Utah and felt the waves of sadness where you live. <laughs> Paul has like the most joyful depression I've ever heard. Honestly. <laughs> It's like, no. I'm going to kill myself, rainbow emoji. And tears <laughs> tears of the cloud. Yeah. <laughs> I'm completely undateable. Yay. <laughs> I worked hard to get there. He's like that Proud old, of it. old Dave Attell bit. They call us the unfuckables. <laughs> oh, man. They, I miss Dave Attell. He is one of the best. Oh, Dave Attell's comedy album is one of the best comedy albums of all time he's such a funny comedian his show on on comedy central was so good insomniac oh know. yeah right. insomniac uh, yeah so good yeah. so we we have we have been known as the westies of the libertarian movement we are shit posters we have been known as uh, i have been known as dark brian nichols uh <laughs> I have the alter ego to the polite brian nichols of uh, the brian nichols show and uh, I, you know, I got kicked out of a group last night, the boomers where gr- a group where we pretend to be boomers. He was too boom, do too boomer for the boomer group. I was doing it too well. And so Jeremiah and I had coordinated and I had a series of posts. I posted like 20 images in that group. And then like, I, I said, Jeremiah, you need to demand that I stop. And then I'm going to post a, a, an admonishment of you. And I said, uh, I, <laughs> I just said, and then, and then after I do that, then you demand that I get removed. And we thought everybody's going to think this is hilarious because we're kidding and mm-hmm. we're clearly kidding mm-hmm. so the point of the group, right? The point of the group. And so, you know, I went to this boomer group and stole a bunch of bad memes <laughs> and basically started posting all these memes and it was hilarious and people were rolling the bad selfies too that was great yeah it's like the, old old person <laughs> trying to do a selfie and doesn't know what they're doing no i'm a i'm a professional uh i work on a comedy show okay i'm not a professional comedy writer but i i do consider myself to be funny mm-hmm. uh i'm on a podcast that's in the top five of comedy podcasts right now in the pat down uh and so i got in Parker. there and i killed it and then what did i get for my grief i got banned for this, listen, you little fucking bitch, Jeremiah Morrill. I serve my country, and I am not going to take shit from a little pissy-stained millennial like you. If you want to post what funny, then I goddamn will. This group used to be funny till people like you ruined it. No, pun- <laughs> no punctuation. Nothing, like, just boomer as hell. You <laughs> didn't misspell enough words either. That was the thing. Right, I know. So that's I why they bitch. Well. <laughs> and so this, gr- this girl tagged a libertarian a left-leaning libertarian by the name of Aaron who runs the group and she removed me Jeremiah also created a poll with the only option was remove him (laughs) from the group and it reminded me of the time that uh, Greg Lenz got added to one brutalist group and they were like the whole point of the group was anything goes you can say whatever you want this is total free speech we're gonna rag on each other and like the more brutal to each other we are, Greg got removed in three hours because he made everyone so mad. He took he took the faces of children. Like this one guy got into a fight with him, and so he took the guy's kid and put him on a flashlight, and that got him kicked out of the <laughs> brutalist group. The, then the next day, James Neese got added to a different brutalist group, and within three hours, he was the admin of the group and had completely deleted. Every single member of this thousand person brutalist group. Yeah. That's how we got the, the, he went for a while, the brutalist overlord, James Neese. Yeah. Um, so we have a reputation. Yeah, wall goes hard. But no person this week has shit posted more than our sweet little Mormon Hody Johns, who I accidentally called Honey Johns because of typos. <laughs> Hody. We changed his nickname to that in the group. So Hody yeah, that's had, his new name. Yeah. Oh, we should, let me do it in the Discord real quick. He had the funniest <laughs> shit post of the of the week. So Hody has been working so hard 
on all of these debates. There has, in my, in my 10 years, I can tell you that no one has ever given as much airtime to the 2020 Libertarian Party presidential candidates. And I'd also say that in the history of my decade, there has never been a field less deserving of 20 hours of coverage. Um, no offense, Hody, but you've done a great job at making sure that the delegates and voters have so much information about the candidates that are running for the presidential nomination. You know, you've done an hour long interview of biography and positions with these guys. And then you've done eight debates. You're doing 10 total. I mean, it's, it's literally over 20 hours of content devoted to the Libertarian Party's presidential candidates. Now, the Libertarian Party has not shared any of these. Okay, now I'm not surprised because the Libertarian Party, even when I have asked in the past, in the early days when we needed the Libertarian Party, they never shared any of our content uh, because then we weren't a legitimate news outlet. Well, now we have roughly 10 times the amount of your national convention listening to each one of our episodes. We reach hundreds of thousands of people a day. Like, we don't really need the Libertarian Party to share any of these debates. I never expected them to. I haven't asked them to. I think Hody has at this point. I think it would be common sense for the National Libertarian Party to share this content. They would see their candidates. But we're kind of in the middle of a fight. So we have taken – so here's what happened. Uh, Arvin specifically, but several of the candidates have been pinging the National Party saying, why aren't you sharing information about the candidates that are running? Uh, and our debates have been mentioned repeatedly in these, in, in these various uh, things. Uh, and so <clears throat> somehow, Hody Johns puts in 40 hours of work to promote the Libertarian Party and their candidates on mm -hmm. our platform right. to literally... Tens of thousands of people at this point have listened and watched these. Mm -hmm. The candidates go, hey, why hasn't the National Libertarian Party shared that? I pointed out that they should share it, and now everybody's mad at Hody and I. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so in true Libertarian fashion, in true Libertarian Party fashion, Hody does something to help the Libertarian Party, and then he got yelled at for it. <laughs> right. Well, back when uh, – it was going into the first few debates from the uh, Canada interview series. I had uh, reached out to the social media team of national mm -hmm. and I asked them uh, what their policy was and if it was possible. And at the time I was told that it wasn't possible because it would show favoritism to a certain candidate. Like if they shared the interview, well then the thing that uh, actually irritated me uh, about that response that I had gotten back was that a month or so later, they shared the uh, an interview that Kim Ruff had done and then mm -hmm. followed immediately by one that uh, Bremen had done. So it, to me, uh, I felt like we were getting the runaround. Mm -hmm. Well, I, and when this all came out, because someone said that our production was qu was poor quality, as supposedly, I have no idea who said it. Uh, all I know is what Arvin put on his Facebook, uh, to which my reply was, and, and Hody, this is not a, a, an attack on you, I promise. It's the reality is that these debates have brought in about half the viewers and downloads that we've had. It makes us absolutely no money as a network. And the candidates, I think, in my opinion, are so poor. I've not heard any, any complaints to the network about the production quality. I've only heard complaints about the candidates themselves. And so uh, it, it, is, it is a situation where, as a businessman, I'm not going to rent out a soundstage. And I do think Arvin has made the point, and he's right. Why are libertarians worried about production quality? You want a, you want a slick production that's 30 minutes long that doesn't give you real information that – cost tens of thousands of dollars so you can look like the other parties? Or would you rather have what Hody's done, which is in-depth analysis and conversation with all of these people so you can see uh, all of it? And so I'm, Hody, we've been accused of creating the false dichotomy of shared or not, but like, I don't think I've ever said, and I don't think you've either said, like, I've never expected them to share it. I think the candidates have a point. And that there, in one hand, there's a lot of people who work for National and who are connected to the LNC who are recruiting Amash, but then they won't actually share their existing candidates. I see the Nationals Party's point where they're like, I don't want to promote these candidates. I do understand the production quality. It's a Zoom conversation, and so it's not going to look the best. I, you know, it's like 
but you've provided a public service to the party. Why wouldn't they want to share it? So I guess I don't, I don't get why they haven't. So like now we'll let Hody defend himself a little bit because I think people think that you're attacking the LNC and you haven't been attacking the LNC. Like our point all along has been like, no, this is to benefit your party. And if your party doesn't want to share it, that's fine. We don't need you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Let me just talk for a couple minutes. So, yeah, like let's let Hody weigh in. We've talked for like five minutes, and the man who. So, <laughs> Paul, what do you think about this? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what do you think about Hody? Hody. Yeah. Hody. Uh, well, Paul is probably the most diplomatic person about. It. He's gone through all the right routes, talked to all the right people. So, Paul's got does have I just immediately started ranting. <laughs> right, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just to just talk on it a few minutes. My, I was just talking about the enthusiastic yes. We've been talking in one movement how it's like, hey, let's get the enthusiastic yes. Well, I want the same thing. I don't want to guilt the Libertarian Party and the LNC right. into saying, oh, I guess you've done in the, I suppose, I would have. Look, this is good content for you. I mean, to provide some more of the, uh, the more of the story, it really blew up this weekend because what happened was somebody on Twitter during the Democratic debates while they were airing on Twitter linked our debate, which was going on at the same time. It was the second debate. It was Thursday, the second Democratic debate. Mm -hmm. Somebody linked to ours and said, these are where the real debates are going. So my live views goes from like, you know, eight people to like 50, right? And I'm just like, whoa, I don't know. I didn't know what's going on. I'm in the middle. I'm just moderating, but I see it happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I'm like, oh, okay. Speaking of production issues. And, and to, to uh, Hody's point, the problem that we have with our Facebook page of 97,000 people is that we're, we're throttled. We're basically, our algorithm is absolute garbage. And so when we go live, we get like one or two people, which we really should have 25 to 50 people every live. But Facebook doesn't serve our lives to anybody despite being right. pr pretty good users of the yeah. live platform. The same on YouTube as well. Yeah, the only time we've ever had 100 people and I'm like, what is happening? And then I realized I was sharing it to Works uh, Facebook page and that was a huge uh, problem but so Hody's like sitting there going 50 people hot damn what's happening well yeah and well I mean to t to speak to the throttling part that that video now that it's done has over like a thousand views so it's 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 funny that not enough people catch it live because it's suppressed but then when it's done everybody's like oh we're libertarians has a new video let's go check it out anyhow that's beside the point the issue is is we get a bunch of democrats for the first time who are watching the democratic debates click on this link all right. And so what they do is they hear from our candidates for the first time. This is a non-libertarian audience. OK, they click this and they're hearing us and our message and this and the candidates message for the first time. This debate happened to be about criminal justice. And we got I got overwhelmingly positive feedback. I was contacted by over 30 people that I'd never heard from before, non-libertarians that just said, man, I heard what you guys said about this. Uh, one story in particular that I pointed out was this girl who said, man, my brother's been in and out of prison since 16. Uh, illegal possession is how it started and they've just got him in this vicious cycle. And it was refreshing because the Democrats are always talking about these kids in cages, those kids in cages and how we need to change the cages. And this is the first time I've heard somebody talk about all these candidates talking about changing a process, right? And so these these Democratic voters that are used to NBC quality, by the way, if we're talking about quality of production, did not have one negative thing to say about the quality of the production, which, yeah, it's not what NBC is, but not one comment about it. It was all focused on, on what the message was. And of course, it probably helped that it was Democrats and it was criminal justice. And I guess we might be a little more socially left, if you want to call it that, in that category. But it was overwhelmingly positive. And if we're bringing this to a new audience and people are hearing it for the first time and they say, man, this is amazing. Well, then what is the libertarian problem with saying, well, I really don't want to share it with these other guys. Let me finish my point here. Go back to 2016. You look at the official LNC Democrat, or, uh, presidential debates, right? Where we say, this is the first ones we're going to record. We're at the convention and we're going to share this. It's some dude recording it on a cell phone. You hear like the movie theater, like ur, 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 coughing going on the whole time. Literally, Hody, the entire history of, of the Libertarian uh, debates, because I got started in the Libertarian Party around the time video streaming started in the, in the mid-2000s. It's always been a guy with a Logitech camera in the back of the room, and you can't hear. It's been muffled. It's been horrible. It's been, you know it's never been great until John Stossel did the 2016 debate, which was an hour, you know, and this is the first time that candidates have had uh, an up close 
view of their face. Most of these guys have USB microphones. Like, you can understand what they're saying. I mean, so this is – it. like, the Libertarian Party as a whole – really has like a distorted view of itself. I'm not talking about leadership. I'm saying the people who kind of make up the libertarian movement, you think you're bigger than you are. Like a Zoom conference call is kind of where the libertarian party candidates are at at this point in history. So like this is about as good as it's going to get with our budget. And if you want something bigger, join the Patreon well, and we'll do it. Well, look how many. I cut Hody off. Let him keep going because I, I want to be. I, I mean, to just finish this off, here's the thing. If they're not going to give me the enthusiastic yes, I wouldn't say anything about it. But here's the problem. It's not that they just don't give the yes. It's that they're like, well, here's why we're not doing it. And they'll say a bunch of different things. So they said my format, right? So I changed the format. You've probably noticed instead of it being, you don't see all the candidates at once anymore. Now it's just that what they wanted, right? So we're making these changes that they want. And then they say, well, we want to increase the production quality. So now I record in 1080 separately for the Facebook Live, it goes, you know, it, it dubs it down because it has to live stream it and we'll get a crazy bad, you know, uh, frame rate. But I record it in, you know, high, as high a definition as I can. Like you said, a lot of the candidates only have these USB videos and that's all I can do, right? But I, I, I jumped through all these hoops and it's just always something. And then finally this last weekend, it came down to, well, we really can't share it because it's, it's not mainstream media. And it's like, but you've shared this, this, and this that's not mainstream. And then they're like, yeah, but we didn't do that because, oh, if we share you, we'll have to share everybody. If we have to do this, we'll have to do that. At this point, it's just excuses. What happened is- well, the And there was some process that we had to fill out some form. And I just said, go fuck yourself. You need us way more than we need you. I don't need you to share any of this content. You're a joke. And what so- are you what do I need? I need the NBC viewers to see me for the first time, to see this message for the first time. I don't give a crap about the Libertarian Party and the LNC because you guys are, you're already there. All right. I don't care if you hear my message. You pretty much get what libertarianism at this point. The people we reached with this podcast are people that are leaving abusive marriages. Their brothers are locked in prison and they don't know what to do. Okay, They've, we've got drug problems. We've got economy problems. We're addressing big problems. We're taking it to a lot of people and getting the message out there. If the LNC doesn't want to do that, I don't understand why. I'm allowed to ask why not. But ultimately, they can put up whatever hoops they want to do at this point. I'm just going to stop jumping through them. You know, I've submitted a letter saying, I don't understand why. I'd like to understand why. Put your rules in because you keep saying there's some technicality why you won't. And make yourselves consistent. Or just say, we don't feel like it. And I will move on. Right. And every time, you, every time you do mention it, there's, there's another hoop to jump through or it's, well, every time you talk about it, we're less inclined to share it as if th they have it twisted. Like this is an independent media organization and I and the 40 contributors that contribute to We Are Libertarians are going to commend or, or castigate or criticize the Libertarian Party whenever we feel like it. And the leadership of this party has this concept that they're just regular citizens, and so therefore they aren't supposed to be criticized. Joshua Smith is one of the most thin-skinned people in leadership I've ever met in my entire life. And anytime you point out, I spent all of 2016 saying, I think his tactics are bad. The way that he conducts himself isn't great. I wasn't mean about it. But he was running for chair, and he was doing things that were inappropriate. And when I pointed that out, it was a personal attack. And I'm not a cheerleader for the party. I, I used to work for the party. But I will tell you that the more Tempest and a teapot that we have around this kind of little shit where somebody like Hody puts in a lot of work to help give, give people an idea of what their candidates are thinking and saying, like Hody didn't have to put in all this work to promote the Libertarian Party. And the thank you that he gets is grief. And... So we're going to be independent and we're going to say exactly what we think. And if that pisses you off, I don't really care because the fact is, is that the We're Libertarians brand has much better brand equity than the Libertarian Party does for a lot of people. I did and receive that, one that, more thank you. I didn't want to ignore this. A member of the LNC did ask to be on the show to see if, uh, to talk about our recruitment efforts at Justin Amash. So they are thanking me in other ways too by asking to be on my show. I've had them on. Our, they want our clout to promote them. Right. And, and then the history of the Libertarian Party has been give me, give me, give me to the people that are associated with it. And then when it comes time for them to do anything in return, ah, oh, gee, I don't know. There's a process for that. And so you know what? I'm just going to start saying exactly what I've been saying in private for about two years. 
the Libertarian Party is a complete waste of time and money. And because of these little, these little controversies, every time you try to do anything for the, the party structure, it's just grief. And it, it's, it's like the, you know, oh, well, and, and that's how I started saying like, hey, recruit better candidates and maybe you'll want to share your candidates. Oh, well, the party doesn't recruit candidates. I don't know what kind of fucking nonsense this LNC member was going on about saying that we don't recruit candidates. Your job is to recruit candidates to run for a political party. Yeah, political party. Their, their entire, the, the leadership and the money in this party has it so backwards. I believe ballot access is actually worthwhile. But then there's a second tier. The second goal is to educate people through the elections. That's not what people want. No. And so when you look at the declining membership, the declining donations, the declining brand equity, the declining interest, the mocking of your candidate in 2016, talk about a production error. That this is why people are pissed at you. This is why people don't want to be involved in the Libertarian Party. Name one other media outlet other than We Are Libertarians that has said yes whenever the Libertarian Party wants to have people on. Yes, whenever there's an issue like Ron Paul being disinvited to, you know how much shit I took in 2016 for defending the Libertarian Party by saying the truth, which is Ron Paul was never disinvited by anybody in the LNC yeah, 2018 in 2018 whatever yeah. you know this is the the we are libertarians podcast more than any other podcast has has gone to bat for the libertarian party when it's right and right. held off and being too critical 2016 we ho hosted the gary johnson podcast on 12 and 16 like this podcast has consistently done more for this brand the libertarian party brand than any other libertarian media outlet Everybody else has used the Libertarian Party as a punching bag to, give, to gain their own clout right, because yeah. you're an easy fucking target. And it's popular. And I'm sick and tired of being seen as somebody that carries water for the Libertarian Party. I'm done with it. You're, you're all a joke. I'm tired of it. Don't share our shit. You're not going to share it anyway, so I'm not, and I'm not going to lose anything by saying this. Trust me, Hody, I apologize. But the fact is, is you don't give a fuck about the people that support you. You treat everybody like dirt as an organization, and then you get mad when people tell the truth about you. So the one podcaster who was saying to all of these other podcasters for 10 years now, hey, give Nick Sarwark a chance. Give the LNC a chance. Give the, your candidates a chance. There's a lot of benefit to the Libertarian Party. Do you think all these podcasters just magically joining the Libertarian Party just happens? You know? Well, you were a pork fest on recruitment. Yes. Just, just basically saying, hey, if you don't like what's going on, join up, join. do something join. about it. Right. That's and I, the best message out there. And I mean, the Mises Caucus did a lot more to get people like Tom Woods mm -hmm. to say, I'm going to join the party. I'm not going to take credit for things that, but I have been an influence in these circles. And if you think, Nick, that you can consistently pick a fight with the libertarian media with your cute little comments on Facebook, I've been saying this for four years. I like Nick Sarwark. I think he has been a good chair. I have always been him to be an intelligent and fair person. But when he is picking a fight with, when he's pointing the guns inside on Facebook, he's doing himself no favors. These are self-inflicted wounds for Nick and the LP that are beneath Nick's talents as a chairman. Yeah, and his talents for being snarky. Right. When he should be directing that at what happened at the debates. Why, right. Where was the tweeting of, you know, calling them out for their, the reason people were saying so much great things about the, the, the debates that Hody were putting on was because they were coming over from the Democrat debates where they were saying nothing. Yeah. They weren't talking over each other. They were talking about bad production problems. Yeah. They were cutting people's mics off and we were giving people the chance to talk and listen and actually formulate thoughts right and put ideas out and and talk about policy whereas in a what 30 second soundbite on nbc with 12 people standing up there or however many it was nobody's talking about anything so everybody, just, nobody wanted to see that there's just no self-reflection with this party and and it's and it's because it's a group of people who either couldn't make it in other parties or have never been politically involved and don't know how to operate in politics you know this is a podcast that one year ago to the day at Porkfest was interviewing the membership director of the party with a guy from Porkfest who was an anarchist that was shitting on the party. And if you go and listen to that, 
the membership director and I basically talk them into giving the party another chance. I'm tired of being that guy. I'm tired of trying to give the Libertarian Party a fair shake. I'm it's, still going to recruit people mm -hmm. like Hody or others that if they're lib – like if you're a Libertarian Party member, go for it. It has value. Paul is uh, – are you an officer in your local party? Yeah, I'm the secretary of the Marion County Party. Right. I'm still going to recruit people because that's a core piece of the movement. And I want as a brand to cover the movement and give voice to every aspect of the libertarian movement, except they're like really alt-right racist parts. But I'm done holding my tongue and saying what I really think because I know that there are 10,000 people listening to my voice and my voice carries weight. And when I say I'm done with the libertarian party and their bullshit, a lot of people are going to start pinging the Libertarian Party as they've done over the last week. Cody, you can testify to this. I saw one guy, one guy blind copied me to the membership request form email that came out in the middle of the week that said, quit being mean to We Are Libertarians and I'll consider joining. That has consequences for your membership when you pick fights with the Libertarian media. And when you pick a fight with the media that has served the Libertarian Party the most in the last seven years, it's going to have consequences. Like, you should just want to share our content because we're – Hody, you have invited every single one of these candidates, and I'm going to go on record and say I have not wanted Chris Marks, and I have not wanted Ben Letter to participate in this. I've been on the fence about even doing this series because of the, the, the quality of these candidates. I think Kim Ruff is the only one that is remotely qualified to be the torchbearer in 2020. I have repeatedly said in group chat, like, Hody, are you sure that we're going to keep promoting this Ben Letter person? And you've said, I'm going to be fair and equitable. And I have not told Hody to pull that guy off because it is up to the listener to choose who they want to support in 2020 because I have faith in the intelligence of the listener. I don't know why your Libertarian Party and your Libertarian National Committee and the social media people don't have the same faith in you. We have actually gotten a lot of flack from various people over our decision to not editorialize and be gatekeepers. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, Hody, We're you've gotten to... flack from me. <laughs> right. Well, you, I mean, and, and it's fair when somebody's got some very serious allegations against them. Absolutely. But here's the thing. I'd rather, I'd rather post your face up and have you, and have you get a ton of airtime only to have you come crumbling down when we find out you gave your girlfriend an abdomen punch abortion or uh you know, or, or beat your kids or something, right? I, I, I'm, I'm willing to give you the mic if you filed your paperwork, if it makes me look unbiased. But after the PR part, man, you're on your own, you know? And so it, it, I have no problem airing these people because I just think, you know what? If they want to talk, they want to talk. Voters deserve to know, but they also deserve to know the other side too. And them being public, I mean, we didn't find out about some of the allegations against one of the candidates until he got big enough on this program and enough people started following him. And they're like, wait, there's something you need to know. Right. Yeah. So for all, you know, he just re he stays that dark horse all the way into the, all the if, way. into. The if we had not posted the interview with Chris Marks, his two daughters wouldn't have come forward and said the allegations that they published, mm -hmm. which there have been some, you can go look at our YouTube channel and look at the video. And he since so, I think dropped out recently. Right. So uh, he I think did. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just done with it. I'm done with well, the cute comments. I'm done with the snark. I'm done with all this bullshit. Like, uh, you know, I will, I will have Nick or I will have libertarian party people on whenever they want, because it's not about my annoyance at this organization or me thinking that they're completely ineffective as an organization. Because when you want to share something on social media, here's a form to fill out to go to a committee to be approved. Right. Which, <laughs> which in, and I will give Nick's defense, which is, a lot of people don't think we should share any information about candidates before the convention as a political party, and I want those pe I want the LNC to weigh in on it. I get that point of view, and I, I, having been the executive director, I get it. But when you're talking about something as simple and as frankly meaningless as sharing on social media, it doesn't right. do a lot. It it really it really is a, an organization that doesn't work. But I will I will have Brian, Hody, any of our contributors. Like, well, the main show doesn't do interviews. Any Libertarian Party person that wants to come on, come on, because it's about serving the audience. It's not about me being pissed at somebody and I'm not going to never have, you know, somebody on. Like, I just, you know, I think you should make up your own mind. And, like, 
I don't want anybody to bug the LNC about this. Like, I don't want anybody to go and like, you know, start a vendetta. I don't, I just want to move on from this because frankly, Hody and I have spent way too much of our valuable time that could be devoted to content creation to, to, to justify any of this. I mean, you won't sign my petition that I started. To... <laughs> I don't care. I don't need them. I don't need them. Right no, that's now. the thing what? is, is, well, sorry, but the, the libertarian party has to come to a point where it, deserves the respect and, and treatment that it thinks it should have, mm -hmm. right? It, it thinks it needs to have, you know, this type of reverence paid to it, but you're not earning that. You're not right. out doing the things you need to do. You're not putting out the right messages and being consistently in the faces of the people who we, the Arvin, Arvin was proven right by the NBC thing. Mm -hmm. The milk toast, middle of the road, squishy interviews on 60 Minutes have great production value, but when they got to see the debate, that NBC crowd saw the debate, they heard Arvin and the other candidates talk about this stuff, they went, wow, I really connect with that. You know, and, and I think Malice, Michael Malice has done a great job of kind of creating an anarchist lane that is not as hardcore as some of these radicals. But the, the, the point I think is well taken in that you should be libertarian. You should be proudly libertarian, even no matter what that means to you. But you, there is no like middle squishy way when you're the libertarian party, be bold, say what you think. If you are a bill, well, be proud of being a bill. Well, if you are an, if you are, that's why people respect the hell out of Daryl Perry because Daryl is Daryl all the time. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't try and manipulate you and tell you like, he's not squishy. Like there is, yeah. there is no nicing your way into being an effective political party. You've got to fight. Mm -hmm. and, right. and the social media membership group that we have in the Libertarian Party is, right. is uh, a handful of volunteers. There's no infrastructure or work being done to, to really promote the party. Right. It, it's a political party. It's not well, supposed to be a think tank. That's what that other thing says. Yeah. Well, you need to put somebody out there who can get the message out. It's like, great, but we're not a think tank. Paul, Our job that, is to get elected. Paul, then Harry, then Hody. So, yeah. And uh, one of the points that I made to the people that I've spoken to on the LNC is that our biggest problem from a party perspective is that we do not have a media infrastructure that pays any, any fucking attention to the Libertarian Party at all. Right. So here is an outlet that is willing to give you coverage and you don't foster a relationship with them? like you just say, well, your production quality sucks and this is yeah. this. And then you just go, why don't you just say, thank you. They should be emailing. Just say, us thank you. I'd rather you just say, th and, and I think there's too many cooks in the kitchen. Hody, I think the problem you've experienced is kind of nobody talks to each other. And it's just like, you've been told five different things because there's five different mandates. And so what you get is, a social media team that is so micromanaged that they're scared to do anything that they just copy pre-approved language like silence is consent and then that that just completely and creates a lazy environment on your team and, and you end up with controversy up. right and so you end up with a social media team that won't share content that's relevant to your base but you'll share silence is consent and then have memes made about you go ahead harry <laughs> All right. First off, um, I'm about to say this. Um, maybe if they compare, if they complain about production value or anything like that again, just simply send them an invoice. Like, all right, fine. We'll up <laughs> this. Here's the invoice from that last debate. Apparently, you care so much right. you want to pay. Here's an invoice. Pay for that. Since once you pay that invoice, I'll you know I'll get the ten thousand dollar thing out and I'll say I'll invoice you for that. The other thing is, it's kind of refreshing to watch you finally like criticize them in public. I haven't wanted it's to do refreshing. it because I know there are people who are hot, dar high, die hard libertarians, and it's so yeah. cliche to criticize the Libertarian Party. And it just like what that does is having been one of those people for so many years and a true believer, it's just kind of soul crushing to constantly hear your party be criticized when you're working hard. People who work in their local affiliates work hard. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of, a, of the mindset where it's like, I don't want to discourage people and I don't want to like bum people out. But I also think like enabling them and saying, I've been on a 10 year journey and I've kind of gotten to a place where I'd rather just talk about the ideas because I don't want to dip my toe in this wolf cage mm -hmm. where when you try and do something nice, you get criticized for it or it's subject to a committee. And it's just like, I'm not, I'm not the crazy one. Like, 
the declining numbers of the party like it's in a death spiral yes. and i don't want yes, to con- i don't want to contribute to that but as an opinion journalist i have to tell you it's in a death spiral it's a death spiral it's a death spiral you can see it when candidates talk about well how much money you got in the bank right, five thousand dollars awesome you're gonna lose right you know and, and the, to pretend it, that you're going to win your campaign mm-hmm. is foolish the other, maybe at the hyper local level but the, the other thing is i think this battle is what really gets to the it gets to the tip of the matter of when you complain about boomer boomer think mm-hmm. because to me every complaint is like wow that just sounds like a boomer someone who wants to control the language and control the messaging so right. much it's like right. well, you can't you're you not can't. effective you you're can't. not effective uh, the, especially in this day and age you cannot be effective the that way 10 people i have making memes for we are libertarians are mm-hmm. way more effective at spreading the message in the libertarian echo chamber than the libertarian party twitter or facebook page uh, our, our Instagram, mm-hmm. which gets tens of thousands of views a day, are, which Facebook, Twitter, like memes are so much more effective. And what people have to realize in 2020 and moving forward, you are the meme or you are making the meme. You are controlling the message and memes have an incredible effect. And you can go and talk to the Empress of Memes, who is kind of our lead meme maker, <laughs> the head of the shop. And she goes, it is incredible to, to make something, share it, it doesn't get around, and then when We Are Libertarians shares it, I see it on Reddit a few days later. And it has been that way for years, and it will continue to be that way, because I understand that memes are the main way that people take in political information. <laughs> and the 15 anti-libertarian party memes that are sitting on my hard drive right now, I have not shared, because... I don't want to pick a fight, A, because I like Hody, and Hody wants to, I want to honor Hody, I want to honor your hard work. And if they want to share this content, then please. But at the same time, don't just give you like 15 different answers. Just somebody tell Hody, hey, your content's shit and we don't want to share it, no thank you. Now we're, we're going to tell the audience that, but that's probably what you don't want us to do, right, Hody? I'll give you the final word on this because it's about you. Look, we want to talk about crappy content, science's consent, a quote from the Church of Satan on Easter. You retweet Justin Amash all the time. Like, come on, man. Like, don't, don't be doing that and then come at us about the poor content thing. It's the double standard of the whole thing. And, and we had one of the contributors to social media said, yeah, we're not supposed to share any debates. Okay. Got it. You're not supposed to share any. And they're like, well, we did do one back in 2016 because, and I think Nick said, because uh, it was a uh, Missouri or Mississippi or something, because they asked. And I was like, well, okay, then, then we'll ask. Can so we? Like, yeah, but they sent an email. Well, I just sent an email to my alternate asking. And they're like, well, not everybody got that email. And I'm like, dude, I am, <laughs> I'm tired. Like you said, Chris, it's exhaustion. It's just too much to, to watch a party tweet out like silence is consent and then get memed by Bill Cosby. Right. And then, and then to just, because here's the thing, here's why it's, uh, that was the Empress by the way. Okay. Awesome. She's great. Here's the thing. Not only is, is it a waste of their time? It's a waste of our time because here I am one person who I don't know puts this on NBC's Twitter unprecedented number of downloads and everything, right? I mean, it's awesome viewership, right? We just get great interaction. So I have a better job. I do better reaching out to NBC's audience than, than the Libertarian Party at this point. And if it's going to be like pulling teeth, I don't have the time. I, do, I would rather not spend the effort. If it's not an enthusiastic yes, then I'm just going to move on. I've done everything I can do at this point. If they don't want to share it and they're just going to be mm, about it, that's fine. But like you said, Chris, they're going to pay the price for that. It's lukewarm. You, People don't want lukewarm anymore. Wait, and no. the thing too is they – they say that we don't have an official stance. It's not in the bylaws that we're allowed to do this officially as a Libertarian Party. I'm like, every single member of that LNC has a social media page that they could individually do what they right. wanted to do. It's not like right. their hands are tied from being it because they put out all kinds of stuff. Well, I, I browsed the policy manual. It says nothing about running social media at all. Yeah, no, there's nothing. There's no bylaws saying they can or can't do anything. It's an, it is a bureaucracy. Yeah. Right. It's why, and, and a lot of the people who are in the bureaucracy aren't wall fans. And, because, and it's because, and I learned this with Wayne Allen Rue. I learned this lesson from him. 
you cannot be a political commentator and a member of the party structure. And, and I think Nick is kind of learning some of that lesson with the Ron Paul Institute stuff. Nick is 100% fucking right about the Ron Paul Institute stuff, by the way. That 71 Republic, I commend Matt Geiger and the 71 Republic team for having the courage to say something against the Ron Paul Institute because it doesn't matter that every word of what that guy wrote about Daniel McAdams being a fishy character and the other two being fishy and saying things that aren't making sense about Venezuela, it has Ron Paul's name attached to it. And so you just get this attack of Ron Paul bots who, who are never going to read the content. They just see, oh, our Lord and Savior is being attacked. I have the utmost respect for Ron Paul. But I think it's really suspect that he has Daniel McAdams sitting next to him because that guy is saying things on Russia Today and on other media outlets about Maduro that are just factually not true and are really weird. And he sounds just like Abby Martin, who draws a paycheck from Maduro. She was just on Joe Rogan. I think she's right about a lot of stuff, but she draws a paycheck from Maduro. She's probably not an unbiased source about Venezuela content. So I, I want to I wrap up. So I have to, I have to move on, Paul, because I want to give Hody one last word because we all cut him off again. It's hard when somebody's not in the room, no matter having the TV screen here with Hody's face on it. And he's um, too polite. But, you know, the, the point is, is that it's, it's – it just, it's impossible. So a lot of these people who are in the party don't like what we do because we cater to you, the audience. And what you want is memes. You want irreverence. You want humor. But you want substantive conversation. You want facts. You want in-depth information. You want to understand the world that's going on around you. And political people don't often like that. And no matter how hard you don't want the Libertarian Party to be a political organization, it is. It's, and it's an imperfect vessel. And so we're going to criticize that when we think they're wrong. And so a lot of those people don't fucking like what we do because we're seen as unprofessional or we're seen. And the reality is mm, we're building good brand equity and you're not. So Hody, final words. Why are you listening to the LNC and the LP anyway when we're libertarians? It's just better in every single way. <laughs> I think really is what it comes down to. I, I got to give a shout out to the, both the Empress of Memes and, and Stone Aldridge. I mean, you, I used to, when I wanted great memes, I used to go to what enemy of the state, uh, like anarcho meme Lord, you know, like a lot of those places that, that are great, man, we're libertarians. We are the best memes. Now we have them. They're, they're here at we're libertarians. You don't need to, I don't need to outsource my memes anymore right? You want social media interaction. You want connectivity to the hosts. You got discord. All right. You got our discord. You want, you want, you want to get in on our book club. You want to get in on Patreon. We have the best Patreon, right? You want the inside track. The biggest right. Patreon. Yeah. This is, there is no other place to go. Especially not the LPLNC. I get it. That's our political official. If we want to do anything politically, you have to work through them. But you should want to work through us. And I am just so excited to be a part of this. One of the things, and I'm going to brag a little bit, one of the things that came about after, with this NBC thing was a, was a lot of likes on somebody saying, Hody John's greater than, greater than, greater than, greater than Lester Holt. Absolutely correct. <laughs> Lester Holt has been garbage for a very long time, but he's mainstream polished garbage. People are finding out on the other side, they're like, oh, this is what a good moderator does. This is what good structure is. This is what good formatting is. The debates are better in every way. Heck, we even had less audio issues. So even in the matter of production quality, at least our mics aren't cutting out. The, the, the screen's not going black. I mean, that was crazy stuff on NBC. And I'll admit it, that was a circus. That was pretty, they lowballed it. And so it was pretty easy to hide that, you know, to, to jump over that. But We Are Libertarians has been doing this consistently, making real impactful changes, giving you, I mean, this wall journal coming up, man, we're talking about borders and we have views from people for and against it because it's okay to disagree. Maybe you like what the Ron Paul Institute said, fine, but we are not a collection of a hive mind. We are not trying to recruit every single individual that completely agrees with us. We, we have an expansive network of people. If you are looking for an informed group with a sense of humor that does it the right way, we're libertarians the way to go. And honestly, if the LP, LNC, or mainstream, statist, anarchist, whatever, doesn't want to acknowledge that, they're entitled to their opinion, but they are dead 
fucking wrong. Uh, we're doing exactly what Nick uh, Sarwark advocated the other day, which is giving uh, open platform to a multitude of opinions and letting grownups decide. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to re-record. No, we'll just, we'll end it this way. We're going to end 100 daily because we did like, we did a long little period here uh, on this particular subject. And so I know we're going to get a lot of listens on the border control stuff. So we're going to break that into a separate episode. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually ask here at the end of We Are Libertarians Daily, Wall Daily was originally thought of by Harry Price. Mm -hmm. He is our main uh, slogan creator. Hody, your life is changing a little bit. Paul's life has changed a little bit. Reinhold's got periods of busyness. Harry's never done a daily. Uh, Sarah Brady Wagner, she's she's got a new job, and so she's busier. And so it's it has been um, it's going to be tougher, I think, for everybody to do a daily podcast. I also think it's been a lot of content for people, and so people get kind of backed up on stuff. And so what I want to do is continue the daily model, but rename it something else, so people aren't pigeonholed to constantly creating content. I'd like to make it something like libertarian politics and policy or something very boring like that that's going to be great for keyword searches uh, but has the same content and feel as what the dailies have been. Um, so I'm actually and, – and I will also just be frank with you, having my own personal clout grow a little bit because of the Pat Down podcast, I know more and more people in 2020 and uh, because of my own uh, side stuff are going to be looking and seeking out We Are Libertarians, and they're going to be coming from one podcast I'm on to another I'm on. And so it's going to be a bit of brand confusion if they tune into what they consider my podcast and they hear Hody. And Hody does a great job, but it also, I think, is, is just, I think it's time for the user's sake to separate all this out a little bit and give everybody a little more freedom and uh, in terms of what they want to create, I'd still like to keep it at 30 minutes, uh, you know, just so it's short and easy and quick. Um, we're not ending the dailies. We're just going to call it something else and put it in another feed. We've also got a new show called Ginger Archie with the great Trisha Stewart, who is hilarious and charming and very smart and interviews a lot of people. Uh, she's very brave, much to her own detriment sometimes. Um, so she, there's going to be a new podcast that's uh, geared towards anarchists coming out on We Are Libertarians. Uh, so there's going to be a few changes over the month of July that you'll notice. But I wanted to end the 100th daily because we're closing this chapter but not finishing this book. And uh, we're bummed Sarah. Sarah's on vacation. She said she could be here, but I said, hey, you're on vacation. If you can make it cool, if you can't, totally understand. Um, but I'd like to hear from the three of you, Paul and Reinhold and Hody. You know, what are some of your favorite moments over the dailies that if people didn't hear that episode, they ought to jump back and listen to some of it? Go ahead, uh, Dennis. Let's start with you, Reinhold. Excuse me. Um, so just to reiterate that we're not stopping them, I do have a couple recorded. Cool. Um, well, I go, obviously I need to call it something else or we're going to, I'm going to change the intros and stuff like that once we decide on that. <laughs> Thank so you we'll for listening to Wall Libertarian, Libertarian Politics and Policy. Yeah. Thanks uh, for joining us today. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to do a better job than that on the editing side. But the, um, the thing that really got me when I was doing the, the dailies and the ones that I was able to do was when I did the Forgotten Man episode and we got a, re- a response back from one of the listeners who's, who really told us that it changed their view and their, their thought on, on life, not just politics, not just libertarianism, but in their own life and, and what it meant to them. So hearing that and feeling that uh, really struck a chord with me and made me appreciate what we were doing. Paul? Yeah, so I think uh, the uh, – episodes that I recorded with Hody early on were probably the most impactful for me. Uh, especially the feedback we got early on from those was fantastic. Uh, hearing people give feedback about how much of a gut punch it was to hear about how broken our foster system is, uh, and the, the ways that libertarians would like to change environmental policy and, uh, child welfare policy. Uh, getting that feedback 
is probably the most impactful part to me. And, and I think that's a, that's a key I want to make sure everybody hears is that we thrive on your feedback. Get in touch with us. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Help us make better content for you by letting us know what you're looking for and what, what strikes a chord with you and what kind of doesn't, what lays flat. So I think free at any time. Go ahead, to, Hody. Yeah. I think for me, number one, if, if I only have to pick one, I'm going to name three, but number one, the one that Paul and I did, it's, it's, I think it's our fifth daily. It's very early on, but who will speak for the trees when Paul and I were answering very tough questions. That is the definitive episode for anybody that just says, I am worried about the environment under a libertarian future. I think you just link that. You, they'll see the show notes. They're extensive. They're well-researched. They're mainstream. They're scientific studies. I think that that is the definitive episode. Anytime anybody has ever talked about what about the environment, even a little bit, I just link that episode. I have it queued up. The other two, Paul and I did, uh, about the healthcare system being fixable, I think that that is probably the biggest misunderstanding that people have about our, I think we, we fix a lot of misunderstandings about healthcare and we find what a 90% over inflation on government insertion into healthcare. Right. And, and it's, and this is, I mean, we're talking Forbes. We're not even talking. <laughs> and we're, I mean, we're talking very mainstream. So that one was great. Um, it's been fun doing the self helps with Dale. Uh, he's moving on too, because he's, he's starting his own business. Um, but he's just a great self-help. He hates being called guru, but you know, just, he's read all the books. He listens to the podcast. And it's just been fun talking about self-improvement. I think the, uh, we did one with Dale talking about when to be tough and when to ask for help. Um, I cried in the middle of that episode. So there you go. If you want to hear me, if you want to hear me bear my soul and cry and talk about a lot of my history, uh, we talk about that one, but that one's really meaningful. So there you go. There's four that I loved. All right. Your respectable outlet <laughs> insertion. <laughs> uh, fuck you guys. Our def- our, I was talking to somebody recently. I go, what's, what's different about what we do than other shows? And they go, you're funny. And I went, oh, so we're not smart? And they go, yeah, kind of, but you're funnier than you are smart. <laughs> it's like, oh, man. So be funnier, Harry. I'm trying. <laughs> Step up the game. Doing, uh, doing the best I can. I uh, write these jokes on the way over here. All right. Good. Uh, so my thing, my favorite was the IVF stuff that Sarah Brady Wagner did with Hody. Um, I think that like it was early on and I went, oh, wow. Like I never would have known any of that. That's when I realized how smart Sarah is. <laughs> And I also, it was just the right combination of it's personal to her. It was information that I didn't know. It's stuff that I didn't think I would care about. But by the end, I really cared about this policy stuff. Like, I just thought that was an excellent daily. I think it was eight, Hody. I mean, it was very early on. Uh, It could be the first or second. I think that even came before Who Will Speak for the Trees. It's early. All right. But I thought that was my favorite. Did you listen to any of them, Harry? Uh, they've bleed together. I'm trying to think of one because it was like there's one with like I remember Reinhold speaking, and I remember a Reinhold and a Hody one, but I can't remember what the topic was. Well, we we did one on Venice. Honduras. Maybe it was that one. Yeah, yeah we did. They, they bleed, yeah, we did one it's on just Honduras. They bleed together because it's like it's just so much like they're nice, easy, chunkful conversations. And that kind of get bleeded together to like Discord talks. Like we're playing video games at night. So it's, it's like that. one big yeah. podcast you've been listening to over the past. Yeah. Yeah. three months yeah and so that's kind of why i want to separate here's what i've learned with audiences in doing this everybody likes a very neat organized situation and so if if you have too many shows in one feed or different kind of content it's mm-hmm. like th- there's no doubt that the dailies have hurt the numbers for we are libertarians main show i'm not making this change for that reason because at the end of the day, the people that stayed are the people that I want to stay. Like, if you delete a show just because you don't listen to it, or too, they're giving you too, too much, much content. Like, like it, you're you're not the person that we're trying to. Like, I want I want people who listen to it and go, man, I really learned something. I laughed while I was doing it. I'm I'm a fan of this show. Like, stick around. So, and I want I want to also make sure we tell people that there's going to be a feed option where you can get everything in one. Feed. Yeah, it's actually 
on the website right now called wearelibertarians.com and you scroll down to the bottom and it's the network feed. So you can get literally every episode through that. It's just a fire hose. It's basically fed from the SoundCloud where mm -hmm. you can listen to We Are Libertarians on everything. I was, I was telling Trisha where we would distribute her content today and I went, this is a lot of work. How much time you got? All right. <laughs> so we're going to wrap up now. Thank you to everybody that has contributed to the dailies and everybody that will contribute to the future politics and policy show. Um, Hody, I especially want to, you get the valedictorian award for dailies. You have worked your ass off. Uh, you have really made a big impact in the network, in the libertarian community. Uh, you're just a gem of a human being too. I really love your enthusiasm. I think you're a great person. And I'm not just saying that because you once referred to me as the mountain on which the, uh, Mount Rushmore of libertarians was carved into <laughs> I wasn't on the Mount Rushmore. I was the mountain it was carved into, which is some grade A ass kissing Hody. But you've really done a phenomenal job, and I'm really uh, thankful for your presence on We Are Libertarians. Oh, thank you so much, Chris. I mean, to everybody, really. I still remember Reinhold's talk about Citizens United, and I, he's so good at legal policy. I love history, but I was very unfamiliar with what was going on. He, he's very good at taking that stuff. Paul has a solo episode called Little Pink Houses. That was great. Uh, it's too bad to be moving on. Let's, let's be straight up here. My popularity has gone from one, my mom and my mom's <laughs> dog's account reading my content to, to, like you said, tens of thousands of people chiming in to what I say. To me, winning, by the way, the libertarian, uh, the LP voluntary, uh, uh, voluntary bracket, uh, but de facto de facto winner yeah, fuck those people uh, <laughs> I want for, all my likes that i gave you back I, right. gave, I gave my clout to you and you stabbed me in the back with yeah. hody literally <laughs> sharpened hody's bald little head yeah, and just gave, stabbed it right into my chest we gave him 10 times the number of votes in that one uh than, yeah. than anybody else got when i find out who's behind that page <laughs> i'm gonna make a meme of you <laughs> <laughs> I will too. Mine might be a little more, uh, more uh, uh, kind. Uh, we'll have like unicorns been, and hearts on it. Hody's it's very, just been great. I have a lot of, I think the great part right now is with this closing, like you said, a new chapter is opening. We're talking about maybe doing a debate series. I want to get together. My degree's in theology. I want to talk with people about faith and, their, and freedom and how those philosophies are compatible, people of different faiths. Um, there's just a lot of different directions. I think this has been so wonderful for me. You have paid me back in spades. I know you're saying thank you, but really thank you. I have so many options at this point. I've had networks be like, hey, if you ever get kicked off, man, we got a spot for you here. And I'm just like, wow, 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 wow. I'm staying with We Are Libertarians. Whatever I do will be through We Are Libertarians. I'm not good enough to do it on my own. I don't trust anybody else except Chris. I want to be a part of this. This is this has just been amazing. Meeting this group of guys, I remember being invited to the chat a year ago and just being able to talk to these guys consistently. This is a behind the scenes look, but these are just great guys. It's fun to laugh with. They're fun to debate with. And I just thank you so much again for having me on. It really does mean a lot to me. It's it's you guys hold a special pl place in my heart and I just look forward to uh, seeing y'all next month at the barbecue. Paul, Paul, what? be more like Hody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and Hody, Hody got to experience the, uh, the Ryan Reynolds face palm. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, that, that was always helpful for him. We, we've had one argument, but it was notable. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for listening to We Are Libertarians Daily. Look out for that new feed soon. We'll be sure to tell you when and where. And uh, you can find all that at wearelibertarians.com. So thank you for listening to We Are Libertarians Daily. And uh, we'll see you. I don't, know, I don't know how you guys end this stuff. Bye. All right, I'm going to record a new intro. We used to say it. see you tomorrow, but <laughs> right. since it was a daily, but yeah. that's not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, welcome, what? welcome, <laughs> welcome. That's how some fun now. Put a little bit more country twang on it. Yeah, 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 you got it. Welcome to We Are Libertarians Daily. My name is Chris Spangle, and I am joined today by Harry Price. Harry, how are you? Doing good. Doing good. All right, I'm here with Reinhold. Reinhold, you look lovely today. Thank you very much. I try to do my best. I dress up for the occasion. You are wearing a Truffle Shuffle Goonies t-shirt with a pineapple Hawaiian shirt over it. Oh, yeah. You couldn't look... Styling. High flying pineapple. The only man that looks more libertarian than you in the room is Paul Copeland, who's wearing a Sauron Make Murder Great Again shirt, a Make Mordor Great Again t-shirt. Uh, uh, Paul, you're a lovely man. Uh, we're celebrating the dailies. Thank you for contributing to two or three of them. 
<laughs> oh man. You beat me. I yeah, I hey, I'm not the biggest underperformer in the room. I know. That's something I, to be said. I always <laughs> tease Paul and he's like, Give me some of your cut. I'm like, do a daily and you can and he's like, Oh, but I'm busy with nothing. Mostly depression. <laughs> right. Uh all you're, right. You're a good landlord, you're doing a lot of improvements. There and, is that. And then Hody, how are you doing? Hody John's the ace, the all star. The man about town, the, uh, yes, I'm, I'm kissing up to Hody because Hody kisses up to me. That's how this works, Paul. Uh, Hody, how are you doing? You know, he was called Babe Ruth, even though his real name was George Herman Ruth. Right. He was called Babe Ruth because the guy who signed him on, they said, oh, this is your babe, huh? Because it's just like his little pet project. <laughs> you made me great. That's Thank right. You. I made you Hody Johns and don't you ever forget it. Won't. Just like Hody's the one the rest of us are all jealous of because we just can't. Well, do the level of work work. that Hody does. If Hody, if you all worked hard as Hody, we might get somewhere in this damn world. Sounds like work. I know. (laughs) Uh, So we originally were going to record this as one long wall episode, but uh, we we talked way too long, and so you may we may slip into an edit that sounds a little bit weird, uh, but we're going to be talking today about Hody trolling the Libertarian Party. Hody did 20 hours of content promoting Libertarian Party candidates, and then the LP got mad at him, which is pretty much typical for the Libertarian Party. And so we're just going to, uh, to, to start that right now. All right. So let me end this. Okay. Uh, oops. Let me – I'm not going to edit that video. Let's just keep the production <laughs> value low in keeping with our <laughs> reputation. Yeah. <laughs> Such low production value. <laughs> Send him an invoice. 